I will just give a um, overview of these projects. Um, some of them, many of you know before, um, so you have to bear over with me then. Uh, but uh, so hopefully for some it's new. Um, already um, Aditya introduced the four projects like that. I would like to kind of just emphasize a little bit on the on the interesting structure between them uh, because we have two research projects, a move up and appears, and two let's say networking projects. So the research is done in, in, in move up and appears, and then you know a manner and net up are associated projects um, to, to those. And move up being a mostly national uh, research project, it's not really true because we do a lot of international um, work also in that, but this is kind of mainly national. Then manner is the international extension of, of uh, move up. On the other hand, appears is a very international project, and NetUp is national extension of that project to give more impact of the EU project uh, peers in Norway. So for all students, this is exam questions. You know, you have to know exactly how these projects will end. No. Um, so move up. It's um, a project in the so-called Topfosk program of the Research Council. Um, it has been around for quite some years now, and it's, um, um, you know, I guess finishing now this uh, this year, so that's uh, special. I, I, mean, I am leading the project, but there is a big uh, and important team of, of collaborators, uh, particularly I would mention Aditya, who has helped me um, a lot in running the project. I would also like at this point to uh, point out, back to the history of this project, that really there were two previous uh, members of the of the lab who contributed a lot in actually writing the proposal, um, uh, Ludovic Koppel and Usama um, So I just want to make sure that they get some credit uh, for all of the things that have happened here. So I think that's, that's nice. They have both uh, taken on and, and, and working in different parts of the world, in Sweden and uh, in Japan, outside of the lab. Now, the theme of, of this project and, and of the workshop is I'm going to appearance in color. You know, we have done a lot of work in color throughout the years, and now appearance is more than color. And I think you will see many examples of that uh, throughout the workshop. Things like gloss, translucency, and texture. I will go quickly here because you know um, the, the more interesting in-depth things will happen later. Um, but for move up, uh, the main Goals are twofold. It's on the actually understanding how we perceive um, appearance and to develop new methods for measuring and communicating appearance. And this very nice uh, slide of Adichas emphasizes the, this, this missing link or uh, the core of the research between what we can measure physically when it comes to appearance and how we perceive appearance. So trying to find um, you know, that, that arrow in the middle of the figure here, um, in many cases, is, uh, is the core of the research. And a um, few of these, you, uh, the detail you have seen already, David, Claudio, and Dasha will present later. So these are the core uh, researchers, PhD students, and postdoctoral researchers um, who have worked in the MOVA project. And um, also some uh, Soji from an event with the program as uh, affiliate professors. Uh, we also have, even if it's a national project, we also have partner universities um, and, and um, colleagues uh, at these universities who contribute a lot to the project at Yale and Gießen and Knam in Paris and the Chile University. We also have an advisory board um, for the project. And I will just mention quickly some, some examples. This is Aditya's research he's been uh, doing uh, throughout his PhD on using um, image, um, using a camera to measure 
a multi angle um, appearance. Um, I think I'm running, you know, I'm, I think I'm running out of time, so I will, I will just briefly run through. Um, here, Helen is uh, one of her, uh, part of her research, trying to look at opacity, uh, typically on ink on the subject, um, but opacity also with a perceptual um, thinking, you know, what is the perceived opacity, how can you measure that? And there are a lot of candidate uh, metrics, and she has been doing perceptual experiments um, to find out what kind of uh, metrics are good for measuring perceived opacity. Um, one early experiment with, with uh, Jean-Baptiste Dumas, we looked at gloss and how we can use um, in computer graphics to generate objects with different uh, gloss and different apparent gloss, and then uh, look at both how these are perceived, um, but also how different image um, contrast metrics can be used to, um, to measure the gloss. This has also been, been continued in later experiments. Yes. There are some uh, comments that you know, we're not able to hear you very clear. Oh, so, so, we, so, microphone. so this is the one which goes for online. So I probably leave it here. And it should probably maybe more clear. Okay. I will. Yeah, I don't know. How do you do it? Help technically? Is it? Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Um, David will talk later about some of his work. He, he did a lot of work on, on looking at how different factors affect uh, how we perceive translucency. Um, examples of shapes, of blur, of um, caustics that you can see in this image in the center. Asha, for instance, uh, worked on, on the problem that different, different software treats appearance models or uh, behavior models differently. Um, so you can have the same description of a, of a uh, surface, um, but then you represent it in different software, you get different results, which is not good. Um, with Jean-Baptiste Thomas, we also made, um, you know, in addition to all the, the interesting work on appearance that can be done with, with computer graphics, um, we also wanted to have some real tangible objects. So we made this collection of objects uh, with different appearance properties that has been very useful for, for the research um, after that. Particularly, David has been using that a lot. I'm sure he will be talking about that afterwards. That was just really some glimpses of the, some of the research going on in, the, in that has been going on throughout the years in, in the project. Dynamics and comprehensive uh, uh, description of the total results of the project. Um, passing on to Manor, the, the extension, the networking extension internationally for um, connected to move up with also again me and Aditya in the management of it. Um, it has been extended, uh, the time frame has been extended, uh, so now um, it will go at least out uh, next year, maybe even longer. Um, we have in addition to the uh, regional partners of Yale and uh, Chiba, that we already had in Europe, we have now Indian Institute of Technology Bombay and Siam University of Technology um, as partners in this project. And um, we really aim to develop a network um, within the field of material appearance, not only with between the partners, but also uh, a broader international network. Um, and the work plan and activities there, there are a lot of activities planned in the project uh, in terms of uh, summer school, winter schools, um, uh, special sessions in conferences, and a lot of mobility, and researchers coming to Jörvik and researchers going out from Jörvik to the partners um, and developing of our master course. Now, the timing of all of these international activities was not very good um, when it came to uh, we, we got started very well we had um, uh, some very nice activities and then everything stopped but now we are starting up again um, and we hope to get uh, much activity going on in, in manner uh, in the year uh, for years to come 
One thing we actually have done now recently that I would like to tell you about is that we have established what we call the Manor Conference Series. So um, we have a, a steering committee uh, established uh, just last month. Um, and what we plan is to organize a series of conferences uh, on material appearance in the years to come. Um, and an important feature with these conferences is that we are not, it's not completely standalone new conferences. We plan to piggyback um, on to existing conferences. And that's an important topic because appearance is relevant for, uh, in many fields, in computer graphics, in you know, color imaging and uh, material science in many, many places. And we want to have this kind of uh, um, conference co-located, co-organized with existing conferences. And the first one that we hope uh, will happen is um, in uh, the MANA conference, Lyon 2022, together with the CCIW uh, workshop. So this is not uh, fully confirmed, um, but it will uh, hopefully happen. So first part now, um, I will um, switch to talking more about appearance. Uh, no, appears in the top. Let me just see if I'm able to from that link and continue with the second presentation. Downloading. Okay. It already uploaded, but my link, you know, went to another file, but it's there. So good. So here's um, our ITN project, EU project. Very fun. Uh, I hope you agree with me, though, so you are working on the project. Um, basically, we have 15 PhD students uh, throughout Europe, um, all working to on appearance in some way. In, in the context of, let's say, appearance printing, appearance reproduction, um, with um, two and a half D relief type of printing and also 3D printing, very important. Um, so in the background here, I will, I will talk about 3D printing in particular, because a lot of things have, have happened in the last years of 3D printing, a lot of growth, but mostly, you know, uh, without maybe stepping on some people's toes, I would say mostly the focus is on getting the shape right. Um, color is, is coming in 3D printing, but in many cases you find like single color plastic kind of looking things like this, you know, that's mostly what, what we consider not, not very interesting maybe, but more things are happening. Multi-material um, 3D printers are coming out that actually can print things like this. Um, but even if they can, it's still an unsolved problem to really control and, uh, the color in a good way. And not only color, when we go to appearance, it's really, there's a lot of unsolved challenges. <coughs> so that's kind of the foundation for the project. Um, now, a lot of things exist um, in, in appearance. Um, there are models. Uh, but there are many problems, and particularly this kind of relationship between the physical models that exist and how actually we perceive appearance is a, is an unsolved uh, problem in many cases. And applications where appearance is important are, are many of 3D printing. This could be examples of prosthesis, of print, uh, 3D printing of teeth, art, you know, art applications. Imagine using a 3D printing as a tool for making art when you really care about how it looks. Many different kind of industries where you want to create parts that has the, exactly the right uh, look. Then you need to control appearance. Um, other examples here of a, of a prosthetic eye or a, a model used for teaching uh, anatomy. So culture has this also an application area where 3D printing with the right appearance is important. So the goals of appears uh, are 
in, in three different levels. First of all, the main goal is really to train this group of um, young researchers uh, to get their PhD, become experienced researchers within the field. So that's the overall goal of training. And you know, to do good research, or to become a good researcher, you need to do good research. So we have um, uh, many, you know, a lot of um, research going on in the field of appearance and printing. And then we also want to see that this works. There is also a goal, more practical goal, just to, to develop applications, etc. And I will go quickly through. This was a very uh, complex diagram of, of describing how the project is. Um, I, will, I will not go more into that. Um, the network of uh, the project is a very important aspect of it. Um, I mean, we couldn't do this project without all of these partners. Um, Um, 15 PC students, I could also have spent some time talking about each one of them, but um, um, we have in this workshop today, we have uh, Alcima and Ali and also Donatella who will talk about their research. So I think those give a good, a good examples of, of the research we're doing here in the project. So these are some of um, most of the, the PC students in the, in the project, plus some from another project also, so, uh, which is emphasizing um, it is really about, this project is really about these guys in there, um, developing their careers and uh, training them to become experienced researchers. Now, remember the Norwegian network, um, NetUp, um, ongoing recently started uh, projects to um, support the dissemination um, and networking from peers in Norway. Aditya is the project leader for that. We have the Science Center here, the Regional Science Center as a partner, just for this. And um, there, you know, the goals, as I mentioned, is really to you know uh, disseminate peers, and it's a really a broad range of of relevant people that we try to reach and very um, kind of maybe a heterogeneous group in some way. I mean, there are some people who actually research on appearance. Sure, we try to talk to them. And there are many, you know, uh, who work on printing and also 3D printing, additive manufacturing, um, the industry there. Um, we think maybe that they should care more about appearance than they do sometimes, you know, some applications, maybe they haven't seeing really the possibilities of what you can do in additive manufacturing if you can control properly also the appearance of things. Of course, you need to, to control the physical properties and it should not break or it should be useful for the application. But in some cases, if you can actually print with the right appearance, I think it's very going to be very powerful. And also we have uh, uh, mentioned specifically the medical direction as, as, a, as a direction that is um, for uh, and we want to try to build build network, you know, find new research collaborations and new opportunities in Norway um, in this area. And the the things we're actually doing in the project is like uh, presenting at conferences, um, workshops like this today, popular science presentations like tomorrow I will talk at the science center. Um, um, on color and appearance and things like that, that is uh, related to this. We will organize some, um, some industry visits, meetings, newsletters, etc. And, and basically, we, very promptly, we try to reach out to, to relevant actors in, uh, in Norway for this. Yes, I, if I have, to, yes, I have two minutes, I will actually show you the. Um, Here's a nice video we made. 3D printing is a revolutionary production method that opens tremendous possibilities when it comes to reproducing complex structures with great potential for different industries like aerospace, automotive, and medical. Did you know that you can 3D print a prosthetic eye or reproduce a baby or a bar? 
allow an official audience to get familiar with the painting technique of Van Gogh without damaging the original painting? Well, you can, which I was seeing relevant, if the three sheets of the night are supposed to be fixing. Or if you can't feel the texture of the big strokes outlined in Van Gogh's paintings, printing a convincing and different appearance is a substantial research problem in the history of land fixing for a wide range of material, and it must be addressed. While the major companies have made great strides, they struggle to adequately reproduce the quality of the things themselves in a way that affords the reputation for people to see or feel in real life, at least in the year. Up here, the appearance of the European advanced research team addresses the problem of the accurate material approach by bringing together 15 talented young researchers. From different disciplines, from vast knowledge, from science, engineers, design, and art. Up here is a European network with specialized partners from academia and industry, training a new generation of experts, focusing on generating new fundamental knowledge and expertise. These experts will develop effective and efficient industrial technology and deal with key societal challenges by expanding the field of appearance and 3D printing. Oh, no, not, not, not again. <laughs> Nice to see it once, but not uh, not twice. Okay, um, thank you very much. I think that was uh, just a brief um, overview of the, the four different. Uh, so um, we have.